Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Nikki, where we discuss love, marriage, life, and so much more. Um, in a quick destination wedding checklist. You know, when I decided to have a destination wedding, I went to YouTube and tried to find a whole bunch of videos of people who had lived and went through this to help me. Um, so I decided after I went through this that I would make a video letting you all know um, the do's and don'ts and things that I did for my destination wedding. So I really hope this helps someone out there. Um, so this video is going to be real quick because y'all know I'm long-winded. <laughs> um, so the first thing I'm going to say that you're going to do with your um, destination wedding checklist. Number one, you're going to create a budget. Um, your budget should determine where you're getting married. In our budget, we factored in the airfare, the hotel cost, um, everything that was going to be associated with this destination wedding. Um, that is how we ended up choosing Jamaica. So I'm going to tell you to definitely... Um, create your budget first and that kind of helps you narrow down where you're going to get married if you know you you want to get married in the islands or if you want to get married in um, Italy or something like that um, your budget will definitely help you determine like what that looks like realistically we did keep in mind um, the cost that your guest will be paying like if you're not paying for your guests to come see your destination wedding so we did factor in that um, because if I had it my way, I would have gotten married in Fiji, but it was very expensive for everyone to get to Fiji. So ultimately we chose Jamaica. Um, so after you create your budget, step number one, number two, you're going to pick your venue. Um, so that is usually done through a travel agent. I, I did it through a travel agent. Um, that's going to be my number one rule rule of thumb definitely gets you a travel agent um they just act as a liaison and it's even better if you can get a travel agent that specializes in destination weddings so like dustify.com um i use the uh, destinationweddings.com so um just find your travel agent that knows about destination weddings and booking for large groups um so after you selected, you made your budget, you selected a venue, you got your travel agent down, um, you're going to pick a season that you want to get married in. That also helps with the cost, um, knowing what season that you're going to get married in. Um, you kind of know rainy season's cheaper, peak season is more expensive, stuff like that. Um, your wedding coordinator should be able to help you do all of that. And I'm saying your wedding coordinator, your travel agent should be, should be able to help you do all that. Um, they're going to help you do the room blocks, organize the guests, handle promotions and all that stuff that comes with that. Um, the fourth thing, I think we're on number four. The fourth thing we're going to do is to create a guest list of people that you truly want there. Trust me when I say that you want to be selective of the energy. I don't know. I'm big on energy. So the energy that you have around you. Um, so certainly, um, make your guest list and I'm going to tell you to send out your invitations. Step five. I'm going to tell you to send out your invitations at least 15 months in advance if you could do 24 months 24 months in advance is really good um that just gives people time to budget make payments plan request time off do all that kind of stuff so definitely um try to get your invitations out as early as possible um i know that like me i wanted to get married like now 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 <laughs> so i literally gave my guests like six months to pay, to pay so don't be like me um the next thing i'm gonna tell you is um hmm once you send out your invitations oh yeah for invitations so we did evites um and i'm definitely gonna tell you that that is the way to go um especially because now we use especially because 
we received a lot of invitations in the mail for other people's weddings. We put them on the refrigerator and then we throw them in the trash after the wedding is over. And then I just think about all the money it costs to make invitations. Yes, it's nice to have like that tangible, pretty piece of paper in your hand. But um, evites worked just as fine. If somebody lost the information and didn't have it, it was easy for me just to send it, resend it to them. So definitely, um, if you want to, I would suggest Evites are the way to go. Um, so after you select your, uh, create your budget, select your venue, pick your planner, create your guest list, and send out invitations, your venue is going to, especially, so we did it all inclusive, um, so that kind of depends on what this looks like. So my experience is going to be based off of an all-inclusive resort. Um, so we decided to do an all-inclusive resort, to have our wedding at an all-inclusive resort, and that um, helped out a lot. Um, because they also gave you a wedding coordinator on site. So at that point, the wedding coordinator will begin sending you, um, emails with package options. So that goes down all the way from the, the decorations to the flowers, to the food, to the photographer, um, and all of that good stuff. Now, some resorts will allow you to bring your stuff on site for a fee and set it up for you. Um, so definitely reach out to them and ask them what options you have there. I know Moon Palace, um, Ocho Rios, we did bring a lot of stuff. You're going to see in another video, I'll have a, a vendor list. Um, so we definitely did that. So we had a mix between stuff that the resort offered and stuff that I had. Um, the next thing, trying to make this video quick, um, is going to be to pick your dress and your shoes. So keep in mind where you're getting married at um, and what the weather is like and all that kind of stuff. But don't overthink your dress. Don't be like me because I ended up with um, two dresses. One dress didn't work out. It needed a lot of alterations and it ended up costing like three times the amount of the dress. And I spent over $2,000 for my dress. And then um, it still needed more alterations. So I ended up letting it go like a day or two before I left to go to Jamaica. And I ordered a dress off of Amazon Prime um, is my wedding gown. So definitely um, pick a dress, but be realistic. You want it, You want something easy to travel with too. Like if your dress gets lost, God forbid. Um, so yeah, pick make a dress but don't like I, I don't know I just feel like today like we just have Instagram and and all these social media and say yes to the dress and all these reality shows that tell us that it's supposed to be one way when it's not like I felt a certain kind of way because I didn't cry um so just don't don't put too much in it just Try to feel comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable in your dress and you feel good about yourself. And that's kind of where I would leave it. I wouldn't put much, too much stress into that. Um, the next thing is your DJ, your photographer, and your food. So, um... The one thing we did with DJ is we made a playlist on Tidal, um, and then we had rented the audio sound equipment. And, um had a playlist and we had someone at the resort man the playlist for us and you know so we made a, a playlist and that worked great like a, a dj um the photographer though hands down don't skimp on the photographer your resort will give you plenty of options for photography i'm telling you that is the place you want to spend your money is on your photographer because these pictures that's what you're going to have for the rest of your life for your kids your great grandkids everything so definitely get a photographer food if you're getting married at the all-inclusive you kind of know that you have everything at your disposal um so we picked we had a um a plated dinner um i believe it was four courses four or five courses we also had um a whole lot of hors d'oeuvres um and we spent um i, I was wrong in my other video we spent like um 
1500 on the food for 25 guests, which wasn't bad at all. Um, and we had so much food. And, of course, it was all open bar and all that good stuff. So your resort will send you a menu um, list for you to select your menu. Um, I know on Moon Palace we had the plated dinner option and the buffet option. Um, the other thing you can do is, um, have a group excursion. So I didn't do this and I should have listened to everyone else, but book one group excursion for your guests, just one so that everyone can like come together and spend time together. That would definitely be my word of advice. Um, oh, next is the welcome bags. I overthought this and I stressed about this hard. So make your welcome bags. They don't have to be a lot. You don't even have to do it. Um, it's just a nice little gesture for all the people that have traveled far and long for your special day. So I would just say realist, put stuff that they will realistically use. So like we got married at a resort which didn't have any mosquitoes, but we I thought it would. Um, so I put like mosquito repellent in there, the little shout wipes or the tide pins, um, like if they spilt something on themselves, um, sunscreen, um, chapstick. I put little door hangers. Uh, let me see if I have one. Yeah, so can this zoom in? Yeah. So I made little door hangers for them um, and stuff like that. So and stuff like that was in my welcome bag. Nothing big. Maybe a map of the resort. Um, chip, I, like I said, I did chapstick. All that because it was all inclusive. So they had all the food, water, dessert, all that that they needed. So just stuff that they would use. That I wouldn't overthink it at all. Um... So, yeah, welcome bags for everyone. Don't overthink that. Um, next, you would just arrive to your venue early. So, um, we did get there like two days before our first guests arrived. That allowed us time to scope it out so we could tell the guests where everything was and we felt very comfortable at the resort. Um, we also got all of our guest numbers and we wrote them down and kept them beside our bed so that we could call to their room or to their voicemail and leave daily messages. So, we would leave messages to just like hey guys today it's a free day we don't have anything planned or hey guys today we have this group event planned or we're gonna have breakfast at this location or dinner at this location um stuff like that um especially if you're traveling um internationally because you know it's hard to communicate via phone and you do have wi-fi calling and stuff like that you can use whatsapp and those kind of things but um definitely the option to call in the room to another room it just makes things a lot easier um the welcome dinner a lot of people will tell you to book this and pay for a private welcome dinner and all that now if you want to if that's where you want to spend your money i'm not going to tell you not to i'm just going to tell you what i did so for the welcome dinner um we just basically told everybody to come meet us at this particular restaurant at this time. We called down to the restaurant and we made reservations for our uh, for a specific time and everyone just came down and met us. So, um that is what I would recommend for the welcome dinner. I wouldn't recommend paying an additional fee for a private welcome dinner. If you want to you can, but I saved all of my hours, um, from to put on to my wedding and not put toward a welcome dinner. And when you get to the resort, of course, you'll meet with your wedding coordinator and you'll put the final touches, um, together. That's when we went over the menu again, the cake. Um, we went over food allergies. We went over decorations, how everything was supposed to be laid out, what the day was going to look like. Um, the wedding coordinator, you know, comes to our room and where the groom gets dressed in and what we all do. Um, is in the list word of advice i'm gonna say is to have fun um and create memories and relax that's it 
like this is your big day and because it's a destination wedding it can feel like it's not a real wedding but it is trust me so definitely just have fun relax and make all those great memories thank you all for hanging with me in my long video i try to make it short um and i will catch you on the next video please don't forget to like share subscribe and comment on my videos and um definitely let me know what type of content you would like to see i know i wanted to give you all um a destination weddings rundown because i know that's what i looked for so definitely hit that bell for notifications i'm letting you know that i'm dropping videos every wednesday bell. and friday subscribe below hit that little bell and also make sure you like this video please and thank you